Today we're going to talk about how to organize your directory, how to name your folders and your files in order to optimize the benefits of using XBMC Media Center. You can see in the folders that I have here uh, that the movie name is the folder name and then within each uh, folder is the actual media. So um, in this particular example we have uh, an MPG file, which is an MPEG-2 file, and uh, we have an ISO file in Mr. Destiny, and we have a DVD folder structure in a good year. But in all cases, it's just named the name of the movie, and that's it. And you might think, well, that's good enough, but as I'll show you in a moment, it can be improved upon. Now, as you can see, I'm in the library mode, as it shows up here at the top of the screen. I'm in, in the library mode of XBMC, and I've added the movie folder to XBMC and allowed it to uh, scrape the Internet for information about those movies. And there's good news. Just by having the movie name and uh, as the folder name, I've been able to identify a good year completely. So it's got the correct uh, data. Oops, sorry about that. It's got the correct data down there for a good year. It's got the fan art. It's got the thumbnail. Everything's great. So one of the three, it worked out perfectly. Now for Mr. Destiny, we've got a thumbnail and um, the correct data where it's describing, you know, the title and runtime and the year, so forth. So that's all good. But when we come to the last movie, Snow, not only does it not have a thumbnail or fan art, but it also has incorrect information because the movie that I have is not, was not made in 1965. So in order to improve the efficiency of the scraper, now, now since I didn't have my folders completely uh, perfect, I have in my XBMC database incorrect information about snow, which I'm going to have to jump through hoops to correct. In order to avoid that, we need to be more precise in the way that we name our movie folders. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, now I've renamed these files and folders so that um, I left a good year alone for the purposes of this demonstration. It, was, it found everything fine anyway. But uh, now I've added in um, Mr. Destiny has the year after it, and Snow has the year after it and TV. Both, this is exactly the way that the name appears, other than I've taken the spaces out. Exactly the way the name appears on IMDb. In addition, I've named the, uh, oops, I see a mistake. I've named the uh, movie with, with the same convention. So it has uh, snow and then the year of snow, 2004, and then in TV, the fact that it's a TV movie in parentheses. So this is exactly the way it is on IMDb. Let's see whether or not we have any more success with XBMC finding the right movie this time. Now I'm back in XBMC and again I'm looking at uh, videos and movies and I'm in the library mode and you can see that it didn't change uh, a good year. That still is got both the thumbnail, the fan art, and the data. And it didn't change Mr. Destiny. There's, there's no fan art available for Mr. Destiny. But while there's no thumbnail or fan art for Snow, now we have uh, the correct data and the movies correctly identified as the 2004 version. So 
the, the moral of the story is that by naming the file the same as the name on IMDb, the scraper can find the movie. Now, in our next tutorial, we'll talk about how to customize these folders even further so that you have, um, you, you can fill in the thumbnails and the missing fan art on these movies manually. But uh, for now, we've talked about how to set up your folders to get the maximum percent completion out of XBMC. And, and again, the good news is that um, Typically, with these non-made-for-TV movies, the percent completion is generally pretty good. So next time, we'll show you how, now that you've got your folders organized, we'll show you how to configure XBMC for, uh, yeah, XBMC for the optimal viewing experience. Thanks for following along, and we'll see you in our next tutorial.